Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for coming. And um, time is short. The owner is coming. Stop playing. He knows everything about you. On that day, you have no excuse. Today you may have excuse, but on that day you won't have excuse. Or I'm asking you, be useful to yourself. Or I'm asking you, be useful to yourself. Because to the outer world, they are not useful. Start being useful to yourself. Then you'll be useful to your family. Useful, I don't mean material, uh, bed, what and what. No, no, no. When you go, leave your family with something internal. So offer prayer that may God grant you grace to be useful to yourself. Prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. We have prayed. Amen. Thank you. May take a seat. Thank you so much. I don't know what type of truth you are holding on to because there are two kinds of truth. John seventeen seventeen. John, <coughs> John chapter seventeen, verse seventeen. Yes. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Again, please. John chapter seventeen, verse seventeen. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Truth based on what God's word say. That's truth. Another truth that majority of people have is sense knowledge truth. Sense knowledge truth based on what our physical senses tell us. And this, you can think, is faith. It isn't. Look, your sense knowledge truth, it contradicts Bible truth. Now, how can you say that is truth? And we are so much used to the outward man, and we have finally believed that the outward man, what he tells us, that's truth. We are accustomed to the outward person. Now we find it very difficult to, sw to switch over and walk by truth of God. 
found in the Bible. That's where our problem is now. We are failing to switch over. To walk by truth given in God's word. But you are the first one to say it is written. But you don't have the ability to walk in it. To all that believed in him, he gave them power to become children of God. Power you are given. You don't imagine your power. Power God give you when you become God's child. You don't calculate with your intellect. Our born again idea, it is calculated one. That's why you are finding difficult to obey God's word. In fact, it's impossible. Because God's word, to walk in God's word, to live by God's standard, you need supernatural power. You will try to talk like this, to dress like that, to read Bible, to pray. You do everything externally correct. But inside, there's issue. Christianity is inside. There's a very big difference between Thomas' faith and Abraham faith. Tell you never. There is a very big difference between Thomas' faith and Abraham's faith. Faith that is based upon what God has said and faith that is based on the physical evidence. That's why in a lot of our, uh, what is this, uh, Cong uh, this crusade, uh, you got faith, what and what, what and what. Yes, but... Very few people, they are a level Christian, very few. A level Christian. We you just walk in level C Christianity. Nothing happened. Level C Christian. Nothing happened. You just talk. You just talk. And with that type of Christianity, you get disappointed yourself. Because you, you don't know how to go to this level, the other level. You don't know. You don't know. So you... you You, you try, but you don't succeed because you don't have power to overcome. Revelation 3 verse 11. Revelation 3, verse 11. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. Then how do we know that we got this crown? Uh, 
Philippians 3, 7 to 9. A lot of Bible verse today, but that's about what I think. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 9. Yes, please. But what things were gained to me, yes. these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, mm -hmm. and count them as rubbish. Amen that mm -hmm. I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, yes. which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. A lot of us, we have self-righteousness. Self. The only righteousness that is correct is the righteousness of faith that comes from God. So I'm not trying not to fall. I'm not trying not to do this. I'm not trying not to do that. My righteousness is of faith that comes from God. It's a living faith. Self-righteousness is not of God. It's self. Philippians 3, 10 to 13. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 to 13. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Mm -hmm. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, yes. but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. But I press on that I may lay hold of that of which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. So I want to know why Christ is holding me. I'm not holding Christ. Neither am I l l holding like this to Christ. No. It's Christ holding me. I've got to know why. That's why I, I, I count everything rubbish. Because it's him holding me. I'm not holding him. What is it that Christ saw in me to get hold of me? So, I don't, I don't, while I'm pressing on, I'm forgetting those things that happened to me in the past. Because I can't load myself with all these things, otherwise I'll fall away from Christ. What are they? Betrayals, divorces, hurts, disappointments, the death of loved ones, the broken covenants, bitterness, afflictions, past victories and past failures. All those, I leave them behind. They're not important anymore. I'm open to God. Look, let's start with you. When you got saved, 
you are being shaped as a Christian. But while we are saved right there, we were not exposed to a level Christianity. It was just, now you're a Christian, now speak in tongues, now read Bible, now uh, pray, now fast. True of us. And that's where we, we started and that's where we are. That's why it's very easy to a lot of us on this level because we are close to traditions, close ethry, your family tradition, white tradition, tribal tradition, culture tradition, nationality, these are traditions, prejudices, and all kind of stuff, whether one is white or black. And this is the Christianity we were introduced to. All you lived your life when you became a Christian, you wanted to do right. <laughs> okay? And uh, you became the best of the group that was formed. Wanting to do right. That's why I say, how can he do that? How can she do that? Huh? It's all based on outward righteousness. Because of this, it's very difficult for you to see your level of Christianity. It's very difficult. To you, you are somebody great. Because you are measuring yourself with the only group you know. Tell the neighbor. <laughs> It's very difficult to see your level of Christianity mm -hmm. because you are measuring yourself with the only group you know. Yes. That's why when you come or you meet somebody who is an A-level Christian, there becomes a problem. Tell them ever. That's why when you meet a person who is an A-level Christian, there becomes a problem. Immediately you see a level Christian, it hurts you. Uh -uh. Come on, let's be honest here. It hurts you. You look as if you're a big zero. A level Christian to see the qualification. They can tell you this lady she's a prostitute, but she's she's having a party. She's having a birthday. You throw a party to a prostitute. A level Christian. It's not what she does. She's doing all this because she hasn't been exposed to another life. You you rather criticize. A man threw a party for a prostitute that everybody knew. He had a venue, paid everything. The owner of the place, after knowing that the man who threw the party was a preacher, said, if I knew there was a church like this, I would go to it. Sure. What type of a Christian are you? You don't talk to anyone, but they just want to be like you. Are you that type of person? Or you're busy marking yourself. And your marks, your level you give yourself is not a true level. All right. Why is it that most business people, people that 
are in the entertainment business think that when they become Christians, they would lose their creativity. Why? I don't want to be a Christian, I'm in business. I'm in uh, creative arts. I'm in this, I'm in this, but uh, I don't want to become a Christian, you know what? You know what, because the only level of Christianity they're exposed to, tell her never. <laughs> the only level of Christianity they are exposed to is very low. Very low. This person is in arts, musician, and all. But you, your level, why, 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 why? This man is making a livelihood. When you become a Christian, you had very good business of selling uh, uh, tavern. You closed it. Why? I'm asking you, why? There it is. Why? But you go to the hotel, you find people drinking in a hotel. Everything that you close you, they are there in the hotel, and you, Christian, you book the hotel. Your level of Christianity is too low. Very, very low. That's why people can't come. Many professionals, they don't want to become Christians. They, they would desire to. If they can see a level of Christian, they would definitely run to Christianity. But the people that have gone before them, they've closed all the doors. Because they're told, oh, be careful. Oh, be careful. They lose their zeal. They lose their aggressiveness. They lose their desire to win. All that they lose. Why? The one who went to them is not a, a level Christian. It's just read the Bible, pray, fast, what, what. This man is a professional. <laughs> this man is a professional. That's why our churches are full with not a level Christians. No. Because all the things you are talking about to this professional, to this uh, artist, what and what, those are not characteristics of Jesus Christ. Let's clap for Jesus. How then did we miss it big time? You missed it the time you are formed as a Christian here on earth. Not from heaven. They formed you. The group you joined. The congregation maybe you started with. Where you went for service and all. It's where they formed you. From there, now you are walking with what you are formed with. Right from the beginning, you are not exposed to a level Christian. You don't even know it. We did not know it. We did not see one A level Christian. Never. We are never confronted with a level Christian. We are never challenged by an a level Christian.
Paul says, I want to plan the level of Jesus Christ level. That's what Paul was planning. That's a biblical Christian. And few don't want it. Then how do you know that you got a level of Christian? Okay, for example, if I can go, I remember one time I went with my security way back. Uh, for rest, the place we were, it wasn't much activity, praying in the day, going to the mountains. In the evening, I said, let's go there to eat. No, we didn't go there to eat. I said, let's go and see what is happening there. So we went there, they were drinking. There was a pool table. I said, let's go there. They said, huh? 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 I said, I said okay, what's your problem? So I went there, I said, be there. I was playing. Bah, bah, this soccer ball. Bah, bah. I lost, I put again. I lost. <laughs> now them, they were looking around, very uncomfortable. So when going, I said, what is your problem? What is your problem? Did we go there for alcohol? Did we go there for anything else? We went there to pass time. While we are playing, others can even ask, why there are no beer around you? Then you start witnessing properly. No, we don't drink. You don't start with, I'm a Christian. No. <laughs> Tell me never. You don't start with, I'm a Christian. No. That's how we miss people. We miss people. We never go to any shop. They only realize when I'm going, when I'm talking and I'm going. And one thing they say, you, you, you are different. I said, no, we're the same then. You and me were the same. No. I said, no, we're the same, honestly. And it's true, we're the same, outside. Inside, yes. If you can talk about inside, yes. Requirements of A level Christianity. You must have a sense of destiny. Not this to acquire money, to do the. No, come on. I'm talking about, about destiny. A sense of what? Destiny. Yes. That means ability to read your design. <laughs> Ask your neighbor. Can you read your design? Can you read your design? Philippians 3 verse 12. Philippi so that's why we miss it. That's why we take this design, this design, this design, then I know you don't have destiny. One with destiny can never be defeated because destiny is mashed together with focus. Thank you. One who has got destiny is one who has got focus. They can never change their focus. Yes, please. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold yes. of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Yes. You tell me why. You tell me why. When I hold him, why, why me? Why this? Why all this grace? Why all this favor? Why all this? Not why pain? Why this? No, no, no. Why do you love me, Jesus? Why can I not do other things? You know, Jesus, please, explain to me why you have gotten hold of me. You explain to you. 
So you stop living life of dice and chancing. I was talking to people yesterday at the mountain, a few who came. What is it that made Abraham know that what he's doing is of God? And that's why we fail to discern, is this God, is this Satan, is it me? God told Abraham to go and sacrifice at Mount Moriah. He was the one speaking against sacrifice. Throughout his life, Abraham was against human sacrifice. Now God said, go and sacrifice. Okay, the Bible does not tell us that God told him go to Mount Moriah. How did Abraham know it should be Mount Moriah? Because that was the place of sacrifice, human beings. So he was taking his son to the place that was preaching against with the people seeing. How did he know it was God? When the devil told him, you've been preaching against this thing and everything, now see you are doing the same. Then he knew it was God because the devil was trying to stop him fulfilling what God instructed him. That's how you know. Yes, Mama? Are we together? <laughs> Thank you. That's how you know. What type of church is this? You go there from morning to evening, then you are doing the right thing. You are in the air church. Amen. The poorest person in this room and those watching by television is not one without money but one with that vision. Nothing, no vision at all, nothing. They are just talking stories. Then you know, this guy is in trouble. No vision. When I finish school, I'm going to start working. Then from there, I will marry. Then from there, I have children. Then from there, educate children. Then from there, die. This is vision. <laughs> You must have something to pull you during crisis, during hard times, during tough times, towards your destiny. Amen. To pull you. Even sickness can come, but because you know, I haven't filled this, I haven't done this. I've been living with this for the past 20 years. I can't go now. And it's true, you can't go because of vision. Amen. Vision will raise you up from a bed of sickness. Amen. Vision will separate you from the rest of the people. Amen. It's vision. Sea level Christian. No vision, no destiny, but they come to church, they sing, clap, and do nothing, only waiting for the coming of the Lord. Tell your neighbor. Sea <laughs> level Christian. Yeah. No vision, no destiny, but they come to church, singing, clapping, and do nothing, only waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all. No. Uh, when he comes, we shall be at peace. Did he say so? <laughs> Make peace here now. He told the Jews, he told them point blank, every place on which they serve your food trades shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river Ephraim, even to the Western Sea, shall be your territory. So what was he saying? I'm going to give it to you, but you have to take possession of it. That's a Christian. Everything we have, are we taking possession? 
That's a Christian. Taking possession, not talking. Not talking. Look, it's funny. People who are non Christians work very, very hard to improve this world. Work very, very hard to improve their lives. Work very, very hard to improve their families. Christians want to go to heaven immediately they are born again. <laughs> Tell you never. <laughs> Christians want to go to heaven immediately they are born again. Without doing anything here on earth. Nothing. Do something, you resident of this country. Tell your neighbor. Do something, you resident of this country. Do something, you member of this ministry. Do something, you member of this ministry. Do something, you member of your family. Do something, you member of your family. I'm just I'm going, I'm going to heaven. I'm going. Who, who told you that you're even going to heaven anyway? Because the way you are born again is questionable. But you want to go to a good place. Did you pay full price? Ask your neighbor. Did you pay full price? You are not born again just to stay in church. No. That's why whenever you hear some dangers, oh, it's rapture, it's rapture. Hey! It's the end of the world. Hey, what are we going to do? I think, hey, Jesus, Jesus, please, Jesus. Who told you it's the end of the world? You don't even read the Bible. Jesus said when he's coming now, everybody will know. Every eye will see he's coming. Now you just want to, him to come, you yourself. Why do, you, why do you want to go to heaven? Because you, have, you don't know your destiny. Yeah. You don't know your destiny. When you get a sense of destiny, it eliminates fear. One with destiny can never have fear. Never. That's why you tell people truth. What they need to know, truth that they should hold on to, you don't plead, but you tell them truth. You are not arrogant, but you tell people truth. And it's easy. You started living your Christian life. Wonderful, I don't know how, but I ask you one simple question. How long did you spend in prayer Asking God to show you your destiny. Because you are in his kingdom. What did he say you ought to do in his kingdom? Simple, for example. How do your unsaved friends describe you? Because you say they are unsaved friends here. When you are with them, they don't know you are a Christian. So to them, they say, when you say this man is a Christian, huh? <laughs> Not this one. I'll, uh, tell me somebody else, yeah, not this one. We are always with him, and in fact, is one who plans all things we do. <laughs> yeah, but when you come here now, it's a different story. Do your friends say you are full of life or you are full of sermons? Discuss. 
Do your friends say you are full of life or you are full of sermons? Are you known to be full of bondage or full of liberty? Tell your neighbor. Are you known to be full of bondage or you are full of liberty? Yes. There was a, a lady who got tired with her husband here in ministry because the husband was drinking. I said, okay, it's all right. Uh, call him. Let me go with him. I took him to Shiloh. I bought him John Walker. I said, John Walker, red one and black. Then I said, buy also sausage. Because I know people drink, they like these things. <laughs> uh, sausage, meat, and everything. So, I said, uh, well, there was a dam, but it's no longer there. We sat down. Drink. Even members of the church, uh, pastors, I said, if you desire, drink. <laughs> and they drank. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. They don't drink always. So as the gentleman was getting drunk, even them, they were getting drunk. <laughs> it, it, it was very interesting because by the time we were finishing, the guy now was talking business. <laughs> I'm going to export mess to Dubai. And all. he's drunk. He doesn't have a farm. But he says he's going to export men to Dubai. <laughs> they drank three or four bottles. Yes, they were strong. <laughs> From there, I only pray that may they drive home safe. That's all. From that day until now, the gentleman has not touched alcohol. I did not condemn him. Slav. You got no power, you, to stop anyone from doing wrong. You are just causing an enmity. Tell your neighbor. You got no power, you, to cause any to stop anyone from doing wrong. Yes. You're just causing an enmity. People not be free with you. Because you judge them. You give them someone. You give them money instead of giving them love. That's all. I never said stop drinking to that gentleman. I said, here is it in abundance. <laughs> that was the end. The wife is very happy. They are happy. She laughs. This day she laughs. She laughs because she's happy. It's not because she's happy that she laughs. <laughs> the fastest way to get hurt is by being afraid of being hurt. Yes. The fastest way to get hurt is by being afraid of being hurt. Fear attracts the very thing you are afraid of. So what have you been attracting to your life? Uh, dismissal, dismissal. See now what is happening. I got a call from somebody in Zambia on Friday. She said she had gone to work, to our working place, then when she came back, she had told her office mate had COVID. All along, she never felt anything. But when she was told your office mate has gone, she felt tight, sweating, and all, she rang me. <laughs> I said, I said, there's nothing like that. Go outside, breathe fresh air. Cancel that out of your Hate. The reason why we don't have L many A level Christians is because we have not preached the truth about what it means 
to be a Christian. We have preached to have member, to have member in our congregation, to have, but we have not preached truth about becoming a Christian. When you read in the book of Acts, after the day of Pentecost, few people were, they were afraid to join the group. Afraid of what was happening there. Here, now our churches, we preach about redemption. We preach about salvation, but not about Christianity. Uh -uh. Hello? Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Yes. You are told, be born again, be born again, so I'm born again. So what next? Even the preacher one, ask him, the preacher, I'm born again now, so what? <laughs> now they are telling you, go Bible, read Bible, read this, read this. Now, by grace, you receive salvation. Now they bring in law. Immediately you are born again, they bring in law. So where is grace? These are the Bible verse. These are the prayer word. There is this. And don't miss church. Now this man, this woman, is religious from birth. That's why you are. That's why when you don't read Bible at night. <laughs> Sorry, Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> the mountain, some will say, hey, prophet. I said, yes. I said, ah. You know, when waiting for Pray with me session. I doze, I wake up, I try by all means. I say, why do you bother yourself, my beloved son? You can have your own pray with me at the times that suit you. This is what I can afford. This is my right time. I can start 6 a.m., 6 p.m. to 10 o'clock. I pray to the same God. No, you... Five. <laughs> this now is a burden. It's a burden. There's no joy. There's nothing wrong. Your heart, your will are bonded that I'll pray this time. But when that time comes, you're fast asleep. It's okay. It's okay. God has allowed it. You desire to pray. Your heart was to pray. You have prayed. It's not the words, bobo, bobo, bobo. No. Hello. Amen. Tomorrow, when I do better, whatever it is, you want to wake up now, tomorrow, you are stronger. What is the point? You wake up, you say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Two hours like this. <laughs> then you see the time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Wake up, go and sleep properly. <laughs> <laughs> In
in this ministry, we are not preaching religion. In this ministry, we are not going to preach successful programs. No. You must know what you are and know what you are not. That's all. You must know what you are, who you are, and who you are not. The problem, now look, you, concerning prayer, you have perfected what is wrong. So, practice doesn't make you perfect. It makes you, it makes it permanent. Tell it never. <laughs> practice doesn't make you perfect. No. It makes you permanent. Because you are practicing wrong thing, which is now permanent in you. That's religion. If what you are preaching, people, you yourself, you don't change. Why not change what you are preaching? That means it's not there. May we preach the right message and we shall all change. That's all, right message. Not one to bind, not one to, to look there. The message of Jesus is good news. To the poor, to the lame, to the little baby, to mama, grandpa, everyone. It is good news. Practice what is right. The right will become permanent in you. Practice what is right. The right will become permanent in you. Look, what has been going on? I've been around in the Christian circle. People changing message. I can see somebody like people who start they are in the pulpit. A man is or a man who is preacher hasn't got money but is teaching you on money. <laughs> it can't work. It can't. That's why I remember before, I, I, I could not commit myself to a church unless given permission. So I just went to visit a church. I won't name it, back home. I went right in front. The door that the pastor used to go to the pulpit, I was there. <laughs> Very excited. Today, I will teach you how Angels worship God in heaven. I looked at him. <laughs> now I've grown. I'm now a grown-up man. Remember, I, had, I was also in the 30s. So you can imagine how I looked at him. <laughs> yes, because I went to church to here, solution to life. I went to church because I wanted to have a closer walk with my Lord. I had a lot going on. Now this man is teaching me about heaven. How angel worship God. So, ah. I stood up right there where I was and left. I didn't hide. Because you when going out of church you do like this. What do you do? 
Why? I walked straight. I'm a man of vision. I walked straight out. When you finished church, you followed me home. You said, why did you come out? I said, because you're preaching nothing. <laughs> there was nothing I was preaching. If I can challenge you, when did you go to heaven to see this worship? <laughs> How can a man who doesn't have teach you how to have? It doesn't work. And these are real things. We see them, but I don't know who told you that when you become a Christian, you are told, stop thinking. Who told you? You can see. That this will take me nowhere, this thing. But you are there. Someone tells you, when you bring 10,000 rand, you are going to have a million. 1,000 of you, you have made this man millionaire. Tell your neighbor. 1,000 of you, you have made this man millionaire. Where did you see that? There's no gambling in the Bible. Nothing. But people don't think. Why desires? As a coach, he should take you where you haven't been and ask him. Ask our, where we go, man of God, woman of God, how did you receive your, your calling? No. Oh, what is your calling? No, to preach everywhere. What? <laughs> Pardon? To preach everywhere. Everyone can preach. What is your calling? No, you know, to, you know, to teach people and uh, to love God. Mm. Do yourself love God, you. You don't impact what you teach. You impact what you are. Yes. This man, I can listen. This lady, I can listen. That's not this one. This is just religion. I'll ask a general question here. Can you go to a doctor who has killed every patient he has operated on? No. I can't hear you. No. Okay, thank you. But you take yourself, your wife, your children to a church that has no life. All of you are there. Why? I thought spirituality is greater than this earthly death. Way. Even coming here, question. Question me. Question the church. It's good. Yes. I, don't, I didn't say just follow. Even when you are following, whoever you are following, there should be distance between here up to the road in case your pastor disappear. <laughs> you don't follow near like this. You are all going to fall together. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. You don't follow near like this. You are all going to fall together. You leave him there. You walk, you walk, walk you stand, you see. This is following. And when you look back, say, okay, he's leading me to the right place. But I can't be that close. When he miss, question, it's my own life. Don't follow a loser. He cannot make you win. 
I was with my security yesterday when I was coming. He, he took me to another road, then I saw a poster. This, the ones they put on the road everywhere. It says, how to, uh, you win lotto, you pay later. <laughs> so I told him, I said, can you see? And people can't see that this man is a loser. You pay later after winning. Him doesn't want to win. <laughs> Give me a break. But people go there. How is he clever? To consult him is money. Already I've lost. <laughs> In short now, who is your coach? You don't coach remotely. No. Who's your coach? Who's coaching you? Because Christianity is a marathon. Don't quit too soon, please. Don't. It's when you see hardship, when you see difficulties, when you see challenges, when you overcome this, there you are. You have grown a level and everything is before you. Every time. Endure hardship as a good soldier. Be comfortable with pain as a Christian. Yes, tell you never. Be comfortable with pain as a Christian. Yes. Disappointment is okay. It's okay. Don't hold anyone. Hey, hey, hey. they did it. Ah, come on, let's move on. Look at, the, look at the way Jesus Christ was living his earthly life. Fantastic. Fantastic. In, in John 14, he says, look, I'm going away. I'm going to prepare a place for you. For in my father's house, there are many rooms. Future. Is there back life there? No. What do you discuss you? I'm asking you, what do you discuss? Back. Look at Jesus. I'm going. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Hope. Knowing fully well, he has got my place already. So I'll do everything for him. I've, I've got a place for him, for myself. It doesn't talk about what, what people said about him, uh, that people did not believe about him, uh, the way his stepfather Joseph beat him when he was four years old. Tell you never. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Jesus grew up like, just like any one of us. He had to be disciplined by Mary. Yes. Sometimes they could go and go maybe to the grandfather, grandfather feed him wrong stuff. He vomits also. He wasn't God. Though he had that extra design in him, but he went through like any one of us. He slept hungry at Joseph's home. No food. He was acquainted with grief. So where did he learn it? When growing up. He only started ministry 33. 30. Three and a half years is gone. So don't think that wherever Jesus went, angels were with him. Let's go here. Let's go. No. He could feel hungry. That's why he looked at a fig tree. said, go and pick me some fruit from there. They said there's nothing. He curses it. <laughs> Look at him. A tree that spoke nothing to him, but he did not produce. Let no one eat uh, anything from me again. He was upset. <laughs> That's like Christianity is a marathon. 
there is pain in a level Christianity. Yeah. There is pain. It's very easy to be like anyone else. But a level Christianity, there is pain. That's why you got to prepare yourself to endure hardship. That hardship is making you to be a level Christian. There are people here, mothers, fathers, when you sit down, it's not no, 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 no. To know the a level Christian, go and sit down. Say, Mama, I want you to tell me uh, uh, your Christian life. When she starts explaining, she has got history. History. In that history, if it happened to you, you know you could have gone. But you see on her face, smiling, loving Jesus more, and so forth. What plans have you got for yourself? Christians were not told and told that from the beginning there will be problems. They were not taught that. They were told when you become a Christian, uh, you'll be rich. Or oh, everything now will be yours. That's why immediately they become Christian, they start claiming. So don't go by the faith that is based solely on physical evidence. You are going to be very, very upset. Move away from Thomas' faith. And um, that's why Abraham, he didn't believe in his feelings. That's what I'm talking about. This is a level Christian. You don't believe in your feelings. Your feelings can tell you revenge. Go back and do this. Is what for? What for? He didn't believe based on what he saw. He didn't believe his physical senses. His faith was based on God's promises. Finish. God said. That's why you can look at Abraham. Abraham's blessings was threefold. Now, a lot of people, when you look at people, look at the type of blessing they have then you can know, mm, why this blessing lacking? Why this blessing lacking? Number one, Abraham was blessed spiritually. Number two, it was physical, health and healing. Number three, which many people like, material. That was financial prosperity. A lot of people go to material prosperity. They don't look at number one and number two. They don't. And we're in trouble. Okay. Second Corinthians five, verse seven. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Again, please. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Because if you are putting your feelings first, then you are putting your body first. 
Can you see? <laughs> then you are gone. Feeling is the voice of the body. I hope you are understanding. Hello? Feeling is what? The, the voice, voice of, of the, the body. body. Now, reasoning is the voice of the mind. <laughs> That's why your anger starts in your mind before you go physical. There's rage in your mind. There's mm, fire in your mind. I'll punch this one before you punch. Where was it? Reasoning. Yeah. Reasoning. Conscious is the voice of the spirit. So, finally, Hebrew 13, verse 5. You who desire to be a level Christian. You walk in these things. Yes. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So what is your problem? Do you believe that? I will never leave you nor forsake you. So whatever I'm passing through, I am with him. He's not behind me. Is with me. We don't believe that. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Never. Thank you. Is there anyone with question? A level Christian is available for anyone to walk in it. Anyone. Pay the price. That's all. If this is not ordinary Christianity I'm talking about here. It's not Christianity of oh, weakness and all. No. Christ's power become your power. Christ's ability become your ability. Not imagining. It's for real. It's for real. Experience Christ's life. Experience it. It's there for the taking. But the way we are introduced, it was religion, not Christianity. We went for religion. Our teachers came from religion and went through the Bible and Introduce us again to religion. They left Christ alone. Complaining, murmuring, jealousy, envy, talkativeness, complex, inferior, a Christian, inferior. What is it that Christ took hold of you? Ask him. That's how you grow in Christianity. What is it? He says you are free, but you are not free because they have taken hold of you. But he says you are free. You are free in Christ. How? He's in charge. Any question? But this is where we miss it. When we miss here, we are just piling on wrong. And fruit, that's why Jesus said, when he come now, he won't ask you how many Bible verses you can quote. No. He said, 
You remember a fig tree? Look for fruit. The same way you cursed fig tree, next pronouncement might be on you. Tell your neighbor. Ah. Tell your neighbor. <laughs> the same way that Christ cursed the fig tree, yeah. the next pronouncement may be on you. Yes. And it happened immediately. It's not time to take chances. It's to walk in the reality of genuine Christianity. And that's what the world is waiting to see all over the world. We want to see genuine Christian. What can happen if I come, thank God now you, there's remote working, if I came to a building where you're working and I find a security officer and I say, I've got a headache, but I don't want to go to the hospital, I know born again Christian. When they pray, I receive healing. Is there a Christian in this building? The security officers are not in this one. <laughs> and you are there, tell it ever. That means your Christianity is not impacting anyone because you should start from the gate man. They know. That one, when he comes or she comes, she greets me. That there's somebody who's just different from the whole lot of people here. I'll call her. Then you're impacting. You don't come and impact here, church. We're already impacted. You tell your neighbor. <laughs> You don't come and impact here, church. We are already impacted. Yeah, it's not here. We don't need you here. You know, fighting here for what? Go and fight outside. This zeal you have to save, it's outside. Save there. Bring souls. Not here. Not here. But you can see also level of Christianity. Level. A, B, C, D, F. Any question? <laughs> and this is what I said. Yeah. Okay, where are you with your Christianity then? Suddenly you have become damp. Oh yes, pastor. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I just want to thank God in your teaching you have answered me. Amen. I've explained to some of the disciples we've got to I've got one disciple. This disciple is a businessman, mm -hmm. very young. He always there, he, he works most in the ministry of his presence. Amen. When you say prayer, you are frustrating him. Then I said to the team, no, 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 this one, we need to pray for him. Yes. Because he normally goes out and come back and say, mom, what is it that you are short of? Uh -huh. I said, I'm not going to say uh, you are no more my disciple. Mm -mm. I like this his character yes. because he is very genuine and whatever assignment you give him, he will do it to his best. Praise but God. when you say prayer, no. fasting, uh -uh. Thank, thank you. you so much. No, thank I'm you very much. Answered, yeah. prophet. I've listened, she's a sensitive leader. Yes. Because that's the calling of that man. Amen. Because, okay, what is it that all of us, when we say prayer, we are all there. And when we say, we need a tent. A man. We need a tent for the church. Yes, uh, prophet. Let's pray. Let's pray. <laughs> no. We have prayed. Now we need the money. Yes, prophet. He will come, number one, and yeah. jump, men yeah. of God. Yes. And even said, here's the money, mama, for petrol. That's it. As we are visiting crannies. Amen. So, I'm... Um, can you Answered, 
Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We, the problem in this level of Christianity, now she knows. This guy is called to the marketplace. Where some of us, we can't go there. He goes there to conquer. And he goes and tells them, I'm a Christian. I'm a, and you, it's true. It's true. You can you go there and collect, for example, you can go to his friends and he say, uh, we need something for the church, guys. His friends who are non-Christians. We need to buy some 20 chairs. They will buy and give him, he brings. You, who's a Christian, you are still fasting. <laughs> There's a young man who lost a wife in Zambia. When I rang him Friday, he said, his friend, who's not a Christian, bought a casket for his wife. Now, that spoke to me. The church people are still organizing. <laughs> Tell the <your> neighbor. <laughs> no, we should be ashamed. We should be ashamed. Honestly. We, we don't know. We were just religious. No, where are you going? No, I'm going to pray for him at the house. Uh, have you got sugar for him? No, I'm, I'm carrying prayer. You know. <laughs> no. Christianity is a total person. That's Christ. Christ is a total person. That's why others, you will not see them. But when they come, they come for a reason and purpose, and they go again to fight in the marketplace. But you, because you don't know that type of Christianity, some of you don't come when we say family meeting. You're destroying him. That's not his calling. That's not strength. Him come, he, he, he makes... Christianity practical. He will not bother you in church to say, I want to be pastor. He's already a pastor where he is. Tell your neighbor. Yeah. He's already a pastor where he is. Yes, he won't bother you in church. But you bring what the church needs. And one time only. You don't say five, five times. One. That's it. <laughs> Look. The church can't move forward when we can't build anything. Everything here is money. Everything. Loudspeaker, the chair, your own floor, screen, everything. That's why I never forget the story. A businessman went to prayer session. And he found a man praying, and he was praying louder than him. So, the businessman could not concentrate. He went to, what is it you want? <laughs> he said, throw the dollar. I said, here, please go and go. <laughs> you have been answered. <laughs> That's how life should be. Some people just give them, they, they go, please, is it meal meal? Here, here, go. Let, let us pray for other things now. Christianity is being effective. Christianity is not recognition in church. No. Genuine Christianity. We are just religious. You leave people in freedom. Freedom. As they go, they'll be much. Chewing. 
and those things they'll be leaving behind, they themselves. They themselves. Well, I, I learned freedom from Christ from young. Uh, the church <laughs> way back. People talk in this Holy Spirit, gift of Holy Spirit, what and what, what and what. A man with three wives came to church. Others were refusing him. I said, no, it's salvation. Who said people with three wives will not enter heaven? Who said? Okay, if you are refusing him, where, what will happen to him, his wife, and children? No, it's a bad picture to the church. It's, it's good to Jesus. He died for them. He died for them. That's all. There are so many rules and regulations that are not of Christ. That's why even when new people come, what and what, we don't want them to excise their giftings that God gave them because you bring in law. You know that I've been here now 15 years. <sighs> You're doing this now. You, No, no, it's wrong. There's some person who is doing it is from the heart and that's the season for that thing to happen. But you, you got no season in your life. Nothing. We have never had uh, Simeon and Anna lead us in prayer. It has come. We never had youth to lead us in prayer. It has come. So that's how the kingdom of God is. You, you are waiting to say, I think you will call me. No. If you are wanting to be called to do service, you want to show off to man. Do you know your calling? Stand up and offer prayer. And ask God to make you Christian. Please. Because when you're a Christian, you're not going to be a problem here. A Christian can never be a problem in God's house. Never. Prayer. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.